Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Juliana and in today's video I'm going to talk about a book that is part of my 12 books for 12 months of 2022. Yes, I'm still finishing that challenge. It was supposed to be over last December. I had planned to read all the books that I had left to read uh, in December, but that didn't happen. So in January, I'm trying to upload all the videos of the challenge of last year. And I read three of them. I'm left with one still that I didn't finish reading, but I have now three reviews to do and upload in January and hopefully the fourth will be also uploaded in January. I'm, I'm trying to be quick at reading the book that I have left to read. Hopefully it will happen this month, but you know, if it doesn't happen, that's okay because no one is in a hurry. What matters is that I came, I come with the reviews to the channel and you have access to them. And hopefully this year I'll be more, I'll be more precise with my schedule and I'll be able to do the, this challenge for 2023 in each month and not accumulate books for other months, right? So let's hope. But well, for today's video, the book that I'm going to talk to you about. So this is my August book uh, for last year to 2022. And the book that I'm talking about is Nausea by Jean-Paul Sartre. This is a French author. And this book was published in 1938. And this was the first published book of Sartre, if I'm not mistaken. And this was a milestone in the uh, existentialist fiction. So Sartre is known to be a philosopher of the 20th century and a well-known philosopher and a precursor of the existentialist uh, theory. And nausea in the first place was supposed to be so Sartre began, read, uh, become, began writing uh, as a philosophy treatise or philosophy monography, something like that. But it was Simone de Beauvoir, another philosopher, that it was his wife, that I also have very interest in reading some books of her. I never have read nothing from Simone de Beauvoir and I'm really curious. So that's hopefully this year I'll be able to do that. And so it was on her advice that if Sartre wanted to write something more literary, he had to change and give the book a different version. And so, uh, oh, and a curiosity, at the beginning of this book, let me open it where it is. Oh, so Sartre makes, um, dedic uh, he dedicates this book to the beaver. I'm not sure if the right translation is beaver, but I suppose it is. The direct, the, li the um, literal translation from Portuguese to English is beaver, but I don't know if it, it has another name in English. So, because beaver was supposed to be the nickname of Simone de Beauvoir, 
his wife and he dedicates he dedicates um, this book to her I suppose because of her advice about it and he after that he works on this book like for four years and this book was then published in 38, 1938 and so he spent a lot of time rearranging his process of writing so that the text will be a philosophical text but at the same time a more digest a digestible book, more, a more literary book for the masses. So that's why I, I said this was a milestone in the existentialist fiction. Uh, we can say maybe this was the first book published about uh, with a literary content but about existentialism. So initially the title of this book was supposed to be Melancholia um, but the publisher or the editor, and now I'm not sure, of Sartre uh, thought that perhaps nausea would be a better option for this book because Nausea is a term that is referred in this book many times and for also for publicity uh, matters I think it was a better option so not only because it was about the content of the book but also of mark marketing and I think that was clever because Nausea is more um, ambiguous right and it startles the curiosity of people at least in my case that was what happened so because this was my first Sartre and I, I didn't know this was his first book so that was a coincidence and I think a happy one and I'm really glad that it happened like that and so, when he, this book came out in 1938, this book had right at the, at the top uh, many critics from known people. One of them was Albert Camus. So, this book was re reviewed by Albert Camus, which um, was great for sales. So, I think this book, for to be... Um, first published, I think this had a very good sales, it, it, sell, it sold well, I think that's what I'm trying to say. About the plot, so this book um, is surrounding a protagonist, a man called Antoine Roquentin. This man is uh, 30 to 35 years old, I think he's 35. Uh, and he's an historian and he at the beginning of the book we real oh uh, um, important thing about this book this is like a diary so this is entries in a diary from our protagonist Antoine he like introduces himself in a way saying that he's an historian and he has changed cities so he lived in Paris and he is now living in Bouville but Bouville is a fictional city is more in the interior of France I suppose because there there is a library where there is arch archives and uh, important documents about public figure that Rockentan is doing a biography about and that uh, figure is from the 18th century and he's called Hollebon. He was a diplomat and that's why Antoine moved to Bouville so he can do research. And so it's funny 
because this book reminded me of the book of this quiet by Fernand Pessoa it's not the same thing of course not but um, in some aspects Hawkington makes like when he makes entries in his diary he talks about things that he's feeling um, so his feelings his thoughts um, his beliefs and sometimes he, he like he's like a bit confusing and it reminded me of the entries in the book of disquiet uh, when sometimes we would read the, the entry and not really understand what he was trying to, to say and in nausea i felt the same thing in some parts it was like i wouldn't understand so well what he was trying to explain but it was very clear that was a complex feeling or a complex thought so in that term was quite curious and it reminded me very much of the book of this quiet so if you have read the book of this quiet i think you will enjoy very much the nausea by sartre and so as i was saying hockenton talks about so his work he passes a lot of time in the library doing his work and he talks about that and he talks about uh, when he makes pauses and he looks at people in the library or when he goes to the cafe and between those movimentations he explains in his uh, entries that the feeling of estrangement of weirdness uh, comes to him that he, it's like even when he goes to pick up objects or opening a door and it's like the object is kind of feels kind of different and is a really strange feeling as he explain explains and he calls that nausea and when he, he talks about nausea he talks he, the, the written word that it comes up in the book is with a capital N so it's, uh, it's like a character in the book the only time where he feels relief is when he's at the cafe and he asks the employee of the cafe to play a music some of the days by Ella Fitzgerald or sing, sang by Ella Fitzgerald and it's the only time where the nausea disappears is when the music is playing and is when he feels relief and feels happy and content and that is because our protagonist Antoine Hockenton he's um, a pessimist in a way is he's a, an individualist he is very I wouldn't say narcissist but individualist he doesn't believe in humanity or in the good of people he doesn't believe that we should love the other person or he doesn't believe that that is possible and he in his entries talks a lot about the concept of freedom so he believes that we are free to do anything we want but we have to we have to put up with the liberty of the others and so that is a, a nonsense to him that's um a better word for this would be what so it's a boring thing that we have to put up with other people basically because that means we 
we are free, but we aren't totally free. And it's very interesting the way that he talks about freedom and um, the choices that we make. And he also talks about the pain of being alive and of our existence. So because the plot of this book takes place in 1932, a period between two wars, and he talks about a decadent society, and he talks about, about a revulsion against humanity, and a revulsion against his own self. He talks about very much about his feelings towards himself, and how he sees himself, and his own existence, and how that is painful and nonsensical, and pointless. That's his meaning. And to oppose the views of Antoine, we have another character that we don't know the name, I think. I think we know the name in the note, in a note, but it's not in the uh, text of the book. So he is known as self taught, and he's like a library worm where he's studying every book in the library by alphabetical order. That is something that Antoine discovers. And he's like the opposite of Antoine, because the self-taught is a humanist. And he believes that we should love the other person. And everyone should love everyone. So, an optimist, in a way. And Antoine doesn't agree with him in any point. And they have an interesting conversation in a restaurant where they were dining together. One tries to convince the other that his point of view is better than of the other. And it's very interesting, the argument that they counterfeit to each other. So that part was very fun. And so the nausea that is talked about in this book is not only a physical pain, a physical indisposition, but is also a existential anguish. And a phrase that Sartre is known to say is existence precedes essence. And so the essence is filled by the choices that we make along our lives. But it's the endless possibilities of that, the, those choices that ends up in anguish. So Antoine is overloaded by the liberty that he thinks he has to do anything that he wants. But there's so many options and so many possibilities that he has to do anything that the space between the present and the future creates anguish. And so it's the permanent state of anguish that we encounter Antoine in. So Antoine is like, you can identify with him and share that feeling that he's feeling during the whole book or you or you think that he's unbearable so those two things one or one or another or maybe the two um, in a mix but it's very funny the way that Sartre could build a character that is so filled with um, down feelings <laughs> because Antoine is in a phase of his life that is very down uh, and at the same time he built a character that you read and you say yeah I, f I feel the same I feel the same I think I understand him and I, I understand where he's coming from and that was my feeling I, I felt I feel sometimes like that that I should be doing so many things and I'm not, that I'm 
losing my time to little things and it's very difficult to not feel bad about it sometimes so there is a point in the story where oh in this book we have um encounter between Antoine and his ex that is called Annie and there we have an interesting uh, conversation where they talk about the perfect moment so like a perfect what it envelops a perfect moment so that was really interesting as well I really enjoyed reading that part. Um, I'm not going to say if they end up together or not. You have to read to know. But further on, we have Antoine projecting a um, decision that as he is an historian, he has the responsibility to telling a story of another and that hinders himself. The, this, the expansion of the self and he will give up on the project eventually and he will turn to the idea of writing a novel so giving wings to creativity manifestation of freedom again the concept of freedom is in here because he thinks like the function of an historian is a subordination to the real, to what happened. So he's caught in the past. And coming back to the music, where he feels relief, that is because music has beginning, middle and end. And life isn't like that. So isn't, life hasn't that structure. structure. is not so organized in that way and music uh, permits artists to be eternal just put the record on and you are there again so it's slavery through art or salvation through art and Sartre will say that in um, years later that this, this was youthful idealism, then that art does not save anyone. So, <laughs> so as this was his first book and his first tiptoes in existentialism, he was maybe with um, new ideas and still develop, developing those ideas and later on he changed his mind. But this book was very interesting, very introspective. You will... It's not a action, as you could understand by now, uh, action-packed, uh, that everything is happening at the same time. Nothing like that. It's very slow. Very, not slow in a way that is boring, but slow in a way that it's... Um, the plot is very mellow okay very very lukewarm and the book ends with a hopeful ending so he's he will return to paris so he will leave bouville and it ends well there's um an episode that happens in this book by the end concerning the self-thought that is a bit it's in a way a, a criticism to society um, and it's not a, a good ending for the self-thought but still for the for Antoine Hockenton uh, it's a hopeful ending so Although the book leads you to a tortuous road where our protagonist is a bit down and a bit uh, analytic of everything and everyone and a pessimist, it will, you will leave this book feeling 
uplifted in a way. So in that term, it was quite fun and I really enjoyed that. So, and yeah, I think these are my comments about this book. I don't remember anything more to say. I really enjoyed. This is the type of book that I intend to reread in maybe, I don't know, a few years from now. I won't say it will happen in the near future because I, I don't see that happening. But in a few years, I think I want to reread this book. And of course, I already searched for other books from Jean-Paul Sartre. I became very interested in his philosophy. And I think for if you are afraid to read those philosophical books or phil phil philosophy theory books that are more maybe heavy, if you start with this, I think it's a good entry and a good beginning because it's a literary content, it's a literary book, so it's fiction. But at the same time, you have here concepts and terms and ideas that are discussed between characters that are really interesting and uh, in a, that also are written in a really fun way and interesting and um, dynamic way. So that is a good point, I think. And I really advise you to go pick this one up. It's never too late to start. And if you start with this one, I think you will enjoy it very much. So, yeah, I think that's it. So please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Don't forget to press the ring bell button to all so you can receive all my notifications. Leave a like, it helps a lot the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. Follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting there whenever I have a book review to do or anything else. And yeah, I see you on the next one. Bye!